there is somebody there you have a challenge in your shoulder and God wants me to pray for you another person you have a challenge in your rib to the right and the Lord wants me to pray for you please can you come if you are there please come Thank you, ancient of days. Rabbi Shatani Mosketai, I command healing in the name of Jesus. I break the power of the affliction. You won't see it again in Jesus' name. I break the power of that difficulty in the name of Jesus. I command total healing. There is somebody, your heart had been giving you problem also. I'd like to pray for that person. If you are there, please come. Heart. Lekebaranos katale shenebatekea. I command healing in the heart. In the name of Jesus. I command healing in the heart. In the name of Jesus. I command healing in the heart. In the name of Jesus. You will see it again. In Jesus mighty name. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you because your word is true all the time. We thank you because you always answer our prayers. Take all the glory, Father, and let your name be glorified forever. I pray that you open our understanding to see what you want us to see in your word. And your name shall be glorified forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shout hallelujah. The Lord is good. Please sit down in the presence of God. I want to welcome you to service this morning. And before I go to the word of God, I'd like to say that our first healing experience that took place from Thursday to Saturday, yesterday, was very successful. It was very successful. It was the first time we were doing it, and we did it because God said we should do it. I want to thank God for all the workers who worked. I want to thank those who prayed and those who gave for that program. God bless you. Throughout the meeting, we did not collect one single offering because that's what God said. And we served food for everyone who came as planned. And we all ate good food thanks to our people who did the cooking. God bless you. And I want to appreciate all my ordained leaders who gave all their commitments. They arrived from midday Thursday and did not leave until uh, everyone had left. Thank you. God bless you. It wasn't a large meeting anyhow. We had 21 people who came from outside. People who needed uh, critical medic- healing attention. Not medical now. Healing attention. And uh, some came from Edo State, from Lagos, from Ondo, where again, from Lagos, or your states, Lagos, Ogun, okay, Benin is Edo State, yes, so people came from different distances, and uh, we thank God they arrived safely here, and uh, we believe they have arrived safely home also. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In case they are here, and thank you for coming. And we give glory to the Most High who gave us um, a pleasant time. Even before the meeting ended, we had a number of on-the-spot testimonies. 
You know, healing meetings normally it takes time before you hear testimony, but this one on the spot there were immediate testimonies and we really appreciate God for what he did. Of course, many more testimonies will follow. They will come. We will hear them more. Hallelujah. Now, the next one would be 6th to 8th of June. You know, God told me that it's going to be a quarterly program. That's what he said. I didn't announce it there yesterday because I was still struggling with it. But when I went back to pray, he repeated it. So I know 6th to 8th of June, another one will be done. And maybe another one in December also. The 100 days will cancel one of what we should have this year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you happy that God is good to us? Yes. Well, at least if you are not, if, if you are not happy for yourself, be happy for me. <laughs> that God is good to me. God is good to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last week I began to share with you about a new Nigeria. And I told you one of our responsibilities about the new Nigeria. I said, every one of us must become politically active. Politically active. Or politically alive. One of the biggest problems in Nigeria is that most Nigerians are, are dead politically. Not not dead physically, but dead politically. They say, ah, another election is coming. Eh, ah, okay, okay. They just hear it from a distance. They never register for election. They never participate in any campaign. And when election is being done, they travel and go and rest somewhere. <laughs> It doesn't concern them. They say, have they finished it? Who won? Okay. And that's why Nigeria has been struggling to move forward. If all of you get serious about politics in Nigeria, because it concerns you whether you like it or not. Whether you vote or not, it concerns you. And I remember what I said last week is that every one of you should go get your PVC. Otherwise, there will be no new Nigeria. You remember, Hannah went to pray in Shiloh. And God responded to her prayers. But she was wise enough to get active sexually with her husband, Elkanah. Otherwise, there will have been no somewhere. Even though God promised, <laughs> if, if the physical dimension is not done, would there be a child? Hello? There won't be a child. God has promised, we must not be foolish as a nation. This is no longer the time to spend all the time praying. Yes, we need to pray. But, Go get your what? What? PVC. Go and get it. I have my own. I carry it every, everywhere. I'm ready to vote anytime. If they say tomorrow is election, I'll just bring out my PVC. If I'm coming from a journey and they stop me and say, we want you to vote now, I just pull out my PVC. It is an instrument to move Nigeria forward. Go and get it. Don't tell me you are old. Put your head to the rubbo no need. Arubbo would. I'm arubbo da. Ah, go and get your PVC jar. Eh? 
So every one of us must have our PVC. Go and get it. In fact, a time is going to come. A time is going to come. That if you want me to pray for you, I will ask you. Show me your PVC. <laughs> you don't show me your PVC. No prayer. Go and get your PVC. It's very important. Now before I get into the business of today, I must reiterate that my message has nothing to do with any political party. I'm not an agent of any party. I'm not, sub I'm not presently supporting any party. I'm just talking about a new Nigeria which has no connection with any presidential hopeful. This person wants to contest next year. That's his business. I'm not even talking about any election yet. I'm only saying that we must build our new nation. The new Nigeria that God is talking about, we must make it happen. It's a message from God. Today I'm moving forward a little bit. And I want to talk on another point, apart from being active or being alive politically. I want to talk about faith. You can tie to my message, a new Nigeria number two, faith. Or if you prefer, you can say, faith in a new Nigeria. Open your Bible to James chapter 2 and I will read from verse 14. James chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 14. James, I think your reply of James is Jacobo. James chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 14. He said, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? That's what we have been doing in Nigeria. We have faith in prayer. We pray for Nigeria, but we have no work. He said, can that faith save him? No. If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warm and filled without giving them the things needed for the body. What good is that? So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and they shudder. Do you want to be shown you foolish person that faith apart from works is useless was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered, offered up his son Isaac on the altar you see that faith was active along with his works and faith was complemented I mean completed by his works and the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness and he was called a friend of God. Verse 24 You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way. For as a body apart from the spirit is dead so also faith apart from works is dead. Praise the Lord. Now faith is probably the greatest ingredient to receive anything from God. Faith. Everybody say faith. Faith is probably the greatest ingredient to receive something from God. Whether it is salvation, you receive it by faith. It is healing, you receive it by faith. It is deliverance, you receive it by faith. You want to receive a blessing from God, you receive it by faith. Without faith, you can't receive anything from God. So, the greatest ingredient of reception from God is faith. 
The Bible actually said without faith, you can't expect to receive anything from God. Our text today has explained that you can't claim to have faith unless you take actions on your faith. Because faith without work is dead. Now, why would God need to tell us about a new Nigeria? If not that God wanted to stir our faith. Why is God saying that there's going to be a new Nigeria? It's because God wants to stir our faith and prepare our mind for it. Otherwise, he wouldn't be talking about it. You know, we already lost faith in our nation. We already lost hope about our nation. And God is turning our faith back in order. God is telling us that if you believe, I will support your efforts and I will give you a new Nigeria. That's what God is telling us. God is saying, don't lose hope about Nigeria. God is saying, it's not over for Nigeria. Have faith in your country again. And I will make it happen. I will give you a new Nigeria. Now, if you are conversant with scriptures, you will understand the importance of faith in God's promises. For instance, there was a certain man called Abraham, the father of faith, they call him. Abraham was just an ordinary person until God spoke to him. And then when God spoke to Abraham and said, there is a land I want you to have. It is called the land of Canaan. What did Abraham do? He believed God. He accepted the promise of God. And he gave his strength to that commitment. He carried his luggage and he went there. He took his wife along with him. He took his servants along with him. He went and uh, cut off from the other dimension. He didn't think of going back to his country, his former country again. He went and dwelt there because he believed God. He so believed God that when his son was to get married, the servant that was supposed to go and get a wife for Isaac made a comment to Abraham. He said, assuming I get there, because Abraham said, go and get a wife from uh, Mesopotamia for my wife, I mean for my son. And the man said, what if I go there and the woman wouldn't want to come here? Can I take Isaac there and let him go back to that place? Then Abraham responded violently. In fact, he made him to swear an oath that he will never take his son back there. Why? Because he believed God. He believed the promise of God. He had confidence in the one who spoke to him. By that time, Abraham had no land in Canaan. By that time, he was living in tents. But he had confidence in the one who spoke to him. He knew that it would come to pass. So he insisted to stay there. A few years later, when Isaac had grown up, there was famine in the land of uh, Canaan. And things were quite difficult. And Isaac was contemplating to relocate, I mean to move to Egypt. And stay there, you know. Like a number of us want to jack back. He was trying to jack back to Egypt. And while he was thinking about it, God spoke to him and said, stay in this land. This is your land. What did Isaac do? He settled down. He planted in the land. And the Bible said that year he yielded a uh, hundredfold for him. Because he listened to the direction of God. He believed in the promises of God. Let me not talk about Jacob and the consequences of the actions of Jacob. But let me talk later, much later, when the Israelites were coming back from the land of uh, Egypt to Canaan, God spoke to them about the new land that he was taking them to. 
And they traveled a long distance. As a matter of fact, it took them 40 years. They were traveling to that promised land. Do you know that most of the people who started the journey did not arrive? Only two out of them arrived in the destination. Out of millions of them that started the journey. What happened to the rest? They died on the way. Why? Because they did not believe the promises of God. They doubted the promises of God. They said, why will we be going to this new land? Whereas there was melon, there was cucumber, there was uh, onion, there was meat, there was good food in Egypt. They believe in what they saw. And they disbelieved the promises of God. They died on the way. So, the subject of believing the promise of God is a serious matter. They died in the wilderness. I pray for you, you will not die in the wilderness. But it's connected to faith. We need faith in the promises of God. What is God saying about our nation? I'm particularly speaking about a new Nigeria that God is talking about. That's what God sent me to talk about. So that's my focus this morning. Now, and I know that the, the ones who need this message most are those of you who, who travel quite often. They are the ones who need this message most. Who travel abroad regularly. And particularly people who live abroad. Who come into Nigeria from time to time. You see other countries where everything works. And, and, and you, you, you live in some of them. You have benefited from those places. And then you see what is happening in our country. It can be so difficult to have hope in Nigeria. It can be so difficult to have faith in Nigeria. After you have seen those ones and you see this one. Particularly, you know, each time I travel out of the country and I'm returning. You know, you don't travel alone. You are, you are traveling in a flight. And there are almost, there are several hundreds of people. You are traveling together. You, whether you like it or not, you'll be hearing what conversations people are making. As soon as you are arriving in Nigeria, you begin to hear comments. Inside the plane, when you look down, you know some people, you like to look down when you are about to land. If you are landing in some other countries and you look down, you see how the houses are arranged. Beautifully laid out, set out. From the sky, you know, you can see it. Some of it is like you draw, like they drew line like this. You know, so organized. But when you are coming into Nigeria and you look down, it's like you are looking at a dump yard. You know, dump yard. I want That's the way houses look when you are entering Nigeria and you say, Yes, we have arrived. <laughs> we have arrived home. This is our country. You know? No, 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 no country. That's the way it is. So when you see that, people begin to make comments. They begin to make comments. And then you land and the process of Wahala starts. All kinds of difficulty. The conveyor belt is not working. The air conditioner is not working. The toilet is not working. You don't, you, you don't rush into Nigeria toilets in the airport because you can rush into some sites that you don't want to see. No, almost nothing is working. And then the next thing is you begin to make all kinds of comments. You begin to, they begin to talk about their disappointments, their anguish, their sorrow. You are coming, you have been, some of them have traveled several countries. You went from the U.S. into Italy, from there to somewhere, and then you arrive in Nigeria. All the airports, when you get there, they are so organized, so beautifully done, everything so coordinated. And then you come to Nigeria and nothing is working. Nothing seems like it's working. 
You can't blame them. You can't blame them. It's always a sad reminder of the condition of our country. Mm. Meanwhile, the unfortunate part of it is that our leaders, that's the most unfortunate part, the worst part of the story, our leaders who have stolen and stolen are still more interested in stealing more and more than building a commonwealth. So it can be so frustrating. It can make you to lose hope in a country like this. It can make you to lose faith in what God is talking about. It can make you to wonder, how is it even going to happen in this kind of a place where there is no, there's nothing sane. There's nothing sane. There's nobody that looks sane out of all the people you are going to be in, 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 uh, interacting with. But I'm not talking about how bad it is. Of course, that's the reason why you see all this uh, Yoruba nation, uh, Biafra nation thing strong, very strong. Because when people see it, when you see all these bad, bad, bad things, you become so agitated. You say, Let's, this thing cannot work as a whole nation. Let's just separate. You think it is the Alausa that are causing the trouble. You think it is the Fulani that is causing it. But it's not about tribes. It's a, it's a bigger subject. However, the good part of it is that God is speaking about our nation. Which means, as we begin to work at it, things will get better. I have traveled in Africa. I've been in several African countries. Several. You know, I preach around. So, I, I don't want to be mentioning names of countries. But I've been in several African countries. There's something I know that all over Africa, Nigeria is celebrated as the strength and the glory of Africa. All over Africa. When you get to any of those countries in Africa, the moment you are introduced as a Nigerian, the people will submit to you. They will relate with you with, uh, you know, you become a sir instantly. They respect Nigerians when they see us. Until you prove that you are not worthy of such honor in person. The first thing is they respect you. They honor you. That you are a Nigerian. Ah, they want to be your friend. And when you now begin to relate with them, you will now decide whether the honor will continue or not. Because several men of us have, many of us have misbehaved, even in Africa. Now, Nigeria became independent in 1960. That was how many years ago? Can you try to calculate? 64. Good. We have math- mathematics around us. Are you mathematics or mathematician? Titian, okay. We have Titian around us. <laughs> Praise God. Alright, it's 64 years that Nigeria had gained independence. Of course, that number of years should be good enough to develop into a glorious country if we had had the blessing of good leaders. But unfortunately, uh, yeah, there are many countries who got independence in 1960 or even after that have done very well. I don't want to delve into all of that and begin to talk statistics. But unfortunately for us, we never had good leaders. We never had good leaders. It's an unfortunate event. It's a misfortune. <laughs> That became, I mean, that befell Nigeria, that we never had good leaders. But still, it is unfair to compare Nigeria with Britain, with America, and some other countries like that. You know why it's unfair? I I used to do it, I did it a few times. I remember when I visited uh, Britain the first time, 
and I traveled in their underground, in their train, their, their railway system in London. So effective, so effective. Oh my God. In fact, it's another life on its own. The underground in UK. And then I had to travel to Nottingham, travel to Manchester, and I went on the train. Oh my God, it was fun. Great fun. I enjoyed myself. We traveled together on the train. We enjoyed it. In fact, many times I had to, I remember I preached in uh, one, one place, I think it was Nottingham. I preached till about 10 o'clock one night. And I, I, I went to catch a train to London from Nottingham at 10 o'clock. I joined the train. The number of us inside the train weren't so many. We were so few of us. But the train kept to its time. Arrive at the right time. Nothing failed. They are not waiting for you. It's not a matter of we didn't have passengers, so we are not going. There's nothing like that. There's a time that it must leave. And it will leave. That night as I sat in that train, I said, oh my God, how I wish my country can be like this. I arrived in London after 12. As I got to London, you know, everything was intact. You can't go anywhere. Buses were still running everywhere at 12 midnight, you know. And I was saying, ah, ah, how come they can have it this good and our own is so bad? Until I did a little study. And I realized that underground, London underground dates back to 1863. 1863, that's when they built the underground. They began to build and expand and expand. 1863. How many years ago is that? 100 and 65 years that they have been building and building and building. In uh, 1972, they built some new ones. In uh, 2017, they built the current ones. So they keep on improving, improving, improving. Don't then say our country is down. Don't compare them with each other. The number of years are far apart from each other. Also, I was in America when they were doing election some time ago. Or when they were getting ready for election. And I saw the activity, the beehive of activities that was going on in America. I saw how everybody was involved. I saw, you know, they were getting ready for Trump, Trump, Trump was conducting the election. And they said, assuming Trump chooses not to step down if he loses the election, what is going to happen? And I began to, and people began to make comments. They began to talk about it. And, you know, there was one aspect that was interesting to me. They said, the White House will move out from the place where it is now to another place, to the house of the new president. All the staff, they will stop they will stop uh, responding to him if he should choose to do it. You know? I said, ah, I wish our democracy would be as good as what they have in America. Then I went and did some research also. And I realized that democracy in America dates back to 1630s. 1630s. <laughs> 1630s. In the British colony. I mean, England colonies of those days. 1630s. You now want to compare with our own kindergarten that started in uh, 1979. No, not 79. 1999. No, you shouldn't compare them. It's unfair to compare our nation with them. 
it, well, it's not wrong to even compare, but to dismiss our own future because of that, to dismiss our own hopes because of our failures, no, it's not right. We are still young. We are, we are, we are coasting along. And God will help us. God will help us. He took them much long to get to where they are. So, if we are just 64 years old, and God is promising to help us, it will get better. I'm not saying we should be satisfied with where we are today, but rather I'm saying we should look forward to a glorious tomorrow. Let's look forward to it. I remember in 2002, I went on crusade in Togo. And I remember how painful it was when I went... You know, I travel almost through the whole of Togo. And I saw market women carrying mobile phones. Yaoni tomato. Yaoni. By the roadside. They will just bring out their phone and they are making call. 2002, you don't know what I'm talking about. 2002, there was no mobile phone. No phone. <laughs> oh, mobile phone. There was no phone in Nigeria. I was struggling. I want to communicate with my wife. There's no way to call her. You, in those days, we used to make friends with people who own landline. Not because you like them, but because you need their phone. Whatever they do, you say, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Because one day you come and say, hey, Joseph, I, want, I want to talk to you. And then they say, oh yeah, go and use it. Landline, in those days. I struggled to communicate with my, 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 my family from Togo. No space. But that was easier. If you want to call from Nigeria, particularly international calls in those days, we used to travel, I used to live in Ife, we would travel to Lagos to go and make phone call. Hey, you don't know what I'm talking about. Oh my God. Am I that old? You want to make a phone call, you want to call somebody, you travel all the way from Ife to Lagos to go and line up and you go to uh, uh, Niter and you line up and uh, they have cubicles there and just, the thing is not even going to go through easily. So you have to be screaming, hello, can you hear me? When are you sending the money? And everybody is hearing what you are saying. Many arm robbers will just follow after you to call anybody. <laughs> what about people who died on the road trying to make... They are, he's traveling to go and make phone call. He died on the way. That was how it was in Nigeria. But then, we are not at that level now. Most of you even have more than one lines. If I call you this one, on this one, it's not working, I call that one. If it's not working, I call your daughter... If it's not working, I call your sister. <laughs> Everybody has phone now. It's better. Nigeria is moving forward. It's no longer to try a mobile phone that uh, you have to be running after. No. Everybody has phone. Everybody has lines in Nigeria. I remember also the challenges I went through carrying money to other countries for my crusades. You want to do crusade in Ghana, and you need to take money. It was a hell. Or you want to buy something somewhere. You need to carry money. That's why rob uh, robbery became so easy in Nigeria. Because everybody has to carry money. And then all you business people, you have to wear all kinds of trousers and knickers. Put money somewhere, put money somewhere, put money somewhere. So that uh, you will get there with the money. But I was in Congo the other time. When were we in Congo? That was uh, October. We needed money. I just take my dollar card on the ATM and draw the money. I was in uh, Togo the other time. The same thing. Any country, we can draw money. We can... We don't need to be carrying money all over the place. It's getting better. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Nigeria is moving forward. Oh, you said, what are those ones now? 
they are, they are very serious. We are moving forward. And I see that the hand of God is working something. I know it's going to get better. Everybody say it's going to get better. Say it again, it's going to get better. I live in the forest over there, in the outskirts of Ibadan, in Ile Tura there. And I'm not afraid of anything. Because I don't really see anyone as my enemy. I have God as promised, and it's going to work. We just came back from uh, the northeast, and we had to cross several states, several cultures to get there and to return. We spent several days among the Fulani people in uh, Guruje, in Gembu, and several towns. We spent several days in the villages among the Yungru people, also the Hausa people. We spent several days among the Igala people in Aiba of Kogi State the other time. We, any, among Igala. Igala people, the most of Alright, we spent several days among Igala people in Naiba, in Kogi State. We were in Kasinala, Takum, Husa, among Kutep people. I remember our vehicle broke down in Lafayette the other time in Nasarawa State. I, our Range Rover got burnt in Boko the other time. I would tell you, Boko, you know, just, uh, I forgot their tribe, what they are called. Gari, is it Gari people? I think something like that. And, uh, what I observe is that they are all friendly to us. Everywhere we go, people are, they are nice. The Fulanis, they are nice. In Gembu, in uh, Guruje. They are all Fulanese. They are nice people to us. Hausa people, they are nice people to us. Kuteb, they are nice to us. Igala, they are nice to us. In Jos, in Bochi, we have been in so many of those places. We travel by road. Actually, since 2002, every year we go to the north. We drive. By principle, we don't fly to that direction. In that journey, we don't fly. Okay? We always drive. From 2002, every year, up to this year. That's 23 years, consistently going on those roads. And I have seen all kinds of uh, tribes, all kinds of people, Nigerian people, Equally, we have traveled to the southeast. We have done meetings in so many places. Everywhere I went, I saw wonderful people. They don't see me as their enemy. They are ready to assist us in every time we need them. Any way we need them to help us. I have friends in all those places I spoke about. I will, I will enter into their sitting room, enter into their bedroom. We talk we relate. I call them on phone. They listen to me. They are my friends. We are friends all over the nation. I even have kids that I pay their school fees. I, I, they are wonderful people. That's what I'm telling you. Nigeria is full of uh, wonderful people. That's one thing I can say very clearly. That it is not over for Nigeria. And we must not give up on our nation. We must not give up on Nigeria. There's a great future for Nigeria. God has said it. Again, I will say that we are not there yet to... But I believe in Nigeria. And I believe in what God said about Nigeria. And I'm sure it will come to pass. However, if you want to ja, don't japa. You understand? You know ja? When you when you buy a goat and you tie it, <laughs> you, you are ready you are ready to kill the goat on so so and so day. He knows and then he escapes. 
o ja niyan o le ja to ba ri pon so e mo le o le ja o ja lo bi to ba fe lo you can go to any country you want to go but don't japa you know what it means to japa it means that you are gone and lost forever don't be lost i said i met one man in texas the other time used in texas an elderly man He saw us. I had a witness. I won't mention his name. One of our friends in Texas. I arrived in town and the food was not ready yet. So he said, sir, I know food is not ready yet. Let's go and eat out. So he took me to one uh, Popeye. And we sat down and uh, they, were, they served us well. And then this man sat across the table. He had been there since we came. We, we didn't since we don't know him now, we're doing our own business. All of a sudden, he just came and said, Ah, and yeah, bro. Ah. We were surprised. We were speaking Yoruba. We didn't know that this man was also Yoruba. And he was hearing everything. We said, Ah, and yeah, bro. Ah. I not And we greeted. Sit down. We talk and talk and talk. Then he had the conversation, he saw that I just came. And I spoke, we spoke. And after some time, he said, I said, ah, to Texas. Ah. I want to go to Nigeria. I want to go to Nigeria. I want to go to Nigeria. When we were about to now separate, I mean, to part ways. I asked him, how long have you been in this country? He said, ah, ah, we don't talk about that one. I said, like how many? He said, it can't be less than 35 years. That you have been in this country? He said, yes. But things are not working. He said, that's the way it is. So. He said, it's not working. So I said, but why are you not coming back home? Ha! You say, how can I come back? When everybody is asserting to bring it to bring it to everybody is expecting me to bring things home. I don't have anything to bring home. Why will I return to Nigeria? Ojapa. Ojaha. Do you understand Yoruba? You know what it means to japa? You know what it means to jaha? <laughs> okay, so my Lord Jahasibel, so Bafe Jah, my Japa. There are some of you you are doing good jobs in Nigeria. I don't understand why somebody who is who is working in a bank, you are earning a good income. You just burn the bridges, close down everything, huh? Resign your job. To go to a place you don't know that you have not tested, and then you get there and you go and be sweeping the floor. Haba. They don't tell you what they do. A lot of people, when those people who go abroad, when you see them arrive, don't be thinking of collecting money from them. Your interest should be to go and greet them. The ekushe. For somebody to live abroad is a lot. What am I talking about? I'm telling you to have faith in Nigeria. So let me say it. Let me let me say it clearly. Over there is not easy. Oh. They are there not because they like to be there. It's because there is no home to come to. That's why a lot of them stay back there. Not that they don't have houses in Nigeria, but things are not working. If Nigeria begins to work, most of our people who are abroad, we come back home. Is it the tax we want to talk about? Or the lack of good jobs that we want to talk about? Or the, the racial segregation, the racial discrimination they go through that we are going to talk about? Or even the climate? The climate. Sometimes around this time now it can become very dark 
Ki se pe kon kon a kon ku. Ada be ni pe a go me jo a le le wa. You just change. Like that. But that's even a small thing. She be a kon ton on on. That was a small thing. What about snow? Dotun, how are you? God bless you. Good to see you. What about snow? That you won't even be able to move your con- your vehicle again. You have to go and carry sh- shovel. And there's nobody who will shovel for you. Everybody is a... <laughs> oh my God. I remember one of, our, one of our friends here when he went abroad. And I called him. Hello, how are you? How are you settling down? He said, ah, daddy. Uga I said, He said, since I arrived, I haven't left the house. Come and see snow everywhere. Ah, I said, You are, you want to go abroad. Now you are there. You know, you that. Or let me shake it. At the bottom of the In terms of for you. So, to buy the fed, don't japa. Don't burn the bridges. Don't go like you don't have a home. Our nation will get better. So put your roots in Nigeria as you are going. I'm not saying don't go. Those of you who want to go, keep your roots in Nigeria. I don't see a reason why you should sell your house, sell your land, sell everything because you are going to a country you don't know. After I took my children abroad, none of them want to go. Can't you see all of them are here? They have their passport. They, they, it's not that they are looking for visa. Why are they here? Why are you here? <laughs> After they went there, they saw the place, they saw Nigeria again. They said, it's better to stay at home. There's no place like, like Nigeria. Our weather is good. There is no hurricane. There is no, 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 no volcano eruption. There is no, all these uh, disasters that kill people, that destroys cities, destroys people. You don't have all of that. We only have two weather in Nigeria. Either it is rainy season or dry season. And when it's dry, you put on fan. You put on whatever you want to put on. When it's rainy, you put on jackets. You are all right. Hey. I was in uh, Connecticut when the snow, when, when the uh, winter came the last time. Ha! At a point, I didn't remember I have here as again. Did you think, hey, you don't know it. You won't know it until you experience it. I had to be wearing clothes like Baba to wear everywhere. You put, let it find a fellow here. You know, you are going to be to mama heat here. Ah. It's like you are living inside freezer. But that's what they deal with every day. Am I discouraging you from going? You want to ja? Don't ja pa. Put your investment in Nigeria. Invest in buildings. Invest in uh, uh, businesses in Nigeria. Because it will get better. Very soon it will get better. Things will get better in Nigeria. So, those of you who are even abroad also, come and invest in Nigeria because things will get better in Nigeria. We must strengthen our Naira as opposed to the dollar. And you must invest into things that are being produced in Nigeria. We need more farms in Nigeria. We need to invest into all these things so that Nigeria can get better. Alright? I think I should, I should leave that. I should just tell you, join us to build a new Nigeria. Tell somebody beside you, join us to build a new Nigeria. And it shall be well with you. In conclusion, I have a lot more to say about your role in building the new Nigeria. But we will go step by step. Today, my point is very simple. And it is that I expect you to believe in God. If you, who is a child of God, you have heard what God said. If you don't believe, then what do you expect from the unbelievers? Our Father had spoken about a new Nigeria. 
we must accept it in faith that God has spoken. James chapter 1 verses 6 to 8. Uh, okay, let me read it. He actually said uh, from verse 6, he says, But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man who is unstable in all his ways. If you are double-minded, you say, eh, maybe God, we don't even know, we don't even know, then you will not receive anything from God. I need you to have faith in what God has said. We must pray for it. And more importantly, we must do everything in our power to make it to happen. The new Nigeria shall come. Okay, let me put it this way. There shall be a new Nigeria. God said it. I believe it. I will do everything in my power to make it happen. I want you to make that confession. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your, on, on your feet and make this confession with me. Say, there shall be a new Nigeria. I didn't like the way you attack it. Let's attack it where? There shall be a new Nigeria. God said it. I believe it. I will do everything in my power to make it happen. Let's do it once more. There shall be a new Nigeria. God said it. I believe it. I will do everything in my power to make it happen. My tomorrow must be greater than today. No matter what I face, no matter what I see, no matter what comes my way, no matter how I cry, one thing I know that is definite in my heart, my tomorrow must be greater than today. My tomorrow, my tomorrow must be better than today. No matter what I face, no matter what I see, no matter what comes my way, no matter how I cry, one thing I know that is definite in my heart. My tomorrow must be greater than today. My tomorrow, my tomorrow must be greater than today. No matter what I face, no matter what I see, no matter what comes my way, no matter how I cry. One thing I know that is definite in my heart, my tomorrow will be greater than today. You are going to pray. Make Nigeria great as you promise, O oh Lord. Make Nigeria great as you promise. Do it for us, Lord. I will do everything in my own power. Everything I need to do. To cooperate with that great plan. But you are the one who can do it, Lord. Build Nigeria. Make Nigeria great. Make Nigeria great. Make Nigeria great. Pray, pray, pray. Pray. The one who promised, he is capable of doing it. I believe... I have confidence that this nation will become what God said it will be. Until I know that is definite in my heart, my tomorrow will be greater than today. My tomorrow. My